Hi there, traders. This is Brad Gilbert with the FX Market Insight for Wednesday, the 23rd of October. All right, another day in FX land, another day of Brexit news. All right, so they've basically, um, basically knocked back Boris's idea to, or his timeline to get this uh, Brexit deal through. Uh, initially, they voted, yes, we'll, we'll, we'll vote for it. Uh, it was positive. Then they turned around and just slowed the whole thing down. So they're now, there's, there's now a push for a, a, a delay from the EU. The initial responses, I think, from Macron in France was, I'll give you an extra few days, not an extra six months, which is what pretty much what the UK want, or another three or four months. So we're going to see how this thing plays out. Sterling's off about 100 points, 150 points. It's sort of hard to work out what's going on. The uh, Trump impeachment stuff's proceeding, Brexit, and not much out of China-US trade issues. So they're the, they're the main issues that are, that are just stalling everything, right? Because there's... There's no resolution to a lot of these events. The, uh, obviously, the Brexit thing is, is like been going on for so long that everyone wants a resolution, hasn't really come, and that's where everything's sort of blowing up or just sitting still. The, the technical picture, it's a little bit mixed from what it was. Uh, Trudeau looks like he survived the election with the minority government. Probably means he's going to have to lean left on policies, which is going to upset some of the oil companies. Um, we'll have to keep an eye on that. The, obviously, the Brexit, the main Brexit issue is, is one of the key things. And you've got some US diplomats testifying against Trump. Uh, and like, you know what? This is how normal markets used to be. US, and like it'd be just a bit of data, US existing home sales dropped more than expected in September. Now, that's something that we, we would generally sort of contemplate and wonder where it fits in with the big, with the big picture of all the economic data. But at the moment, we're not really doing that because it's all this geopolitical stuff. Now, as I mentioned yesterday, the technical setup could change very quickly. If anything, with no follow through on, you know, a positive Brexit, there's nothing else happening, right? No China, US trade issue news. Uh, everything else is sort of whipping around and sterling is just dropping a little bit. What we've seen is the hourly trend is all sideways, right? We're building up for the next move, whether that's up or down, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I'll show you the technicals in a second. The Aussie and Kiwi are the two pairs which are still sort of hanging up there. The rest of them have all dropped back into within recent ranges, and that's why they're sort of the hourly time frame is uh, sideways. So that's where we are. So let me just have a look at the charts to give you a bit of a heads up on what I'm seeing. The, um, here's the Aussie and Kiwi. I mean, they are sort of drifting sideways, but you know what? They're still up above recent levels, recent resistance levels. So to me, that's still potentially going up. Uh, Dollar Yen found a real nice home here around 108 and a half, just trading sideways. You can see here Euro, I mean, it was always going to fatigue. Um, we'll get the, all this EU stuff coming out tomorrow or Thursday. So this is, to me, Euro's primed to be belted back down under 110 again, but we just need the data to give traders the confidence to get into the trades. So at this stage, stalling, to me, it's ready for a move lower. Uh, if sterling, and I'm thinking with this delay in sterling, we might see sterling back at 125 very quickly, and that might be enough to push uh, euro back down to 110. So just keep an eye on that. I mean, that looks like the writing's on the wall for that. It's just hard to get into sterling and trust anything because, as I said, you're getting positive news and negative news and this, that, and the other. So it's, but anyway, the negative news looks like it's going to start dominating. Dollar CAD, well, we're right in between a couple of levels here. You can see this sort of short-term downtrend. You got one, two, three, sort of four touches here. This is a nice trend line, probably the nicest we've got across all the major currency pairs. Um, and we've got this sort of uh, support line that's just been whipping through. To me, you know, we've got a bit of a chance here on Dollar CAD. Once again, we are waiting for some directional, fundamental direction not just geopolitical uh, direction to, to really get things moving. So it's a bit of a wait and see just at the moment. But to me, it looks like the US dollar is uh, starting to form a bit of a base. And if I just bring you back to sort of the dollar or the dollar index itself, just having a look there, you can see how it's, you know, just drifted off with all the, uh, you know, a bit of crap news, a bit of uh, weak fundamentals, and then everything else that's going on, sterling going through the roof, obviously, the, the whole basket pushes the dollar index down. 
It's uh, just drifted below that support trend line. Now it's back above it. It looks like it's ready to have another crack towards, you know, 98, the figure on the dollar index itself. So that's what, what's stabilised. And there's been no dollar news, right? So the market, this is what's, ha what's happening across the globe. And, and you look at the uh, dollar one, it's now sort of hanging sideways as well. We need some of this news to get resolved. Brexit being pushed back beyond October 31st massively sucks, right? We want something to happen there. Brings back sterling, takes out a lot of uh, um, speculative stuff out of the market. And uh, that's a great thing. So at this stage, we're waiting to see what happens. And the only thing you can do in the meantime is actually keep trailing, keep seeing what's coming up because this is where the direction will come from is the fundamentals which continue to roll out but with no major impact at this stage. There's no continuation with the data. Like we're not seeing weak data, weak data, weak data. We're seeing weak data, bit of strong, bit of mixed. You know, we're not getting that continuation. The, uh, as I said, we're coming into a pretty quiet trade day. I mean, I mentioned that yesterday, but if you look at the, um, what's coming up, as I said, the, the main trade day for me this week is Thursday. And I like the setup of Euro. I like the fact that it's higher because it's, it should be going down. We've got a whole bunch of things coming out as well as the US durable goods. This is where things are gonna really light up. Um, so I'd say just hang in there at the moment. Um, unless there's fresh news out of these geopolitical events, we're not gonna see too much activity at the moment. To me, the dollar, the US dollar is back on firm footing. It's still down on the dailies and weeklies, but you know what, it's picking itself up off the floor, ready for another crack at the top side. That's all I've got for you today, guys. Hang in there and uh, hopefully we get some good conditions shortly. Cheerio.